Okay, this is author Scott Lance, and if you got gotten this far, you must have seen my first two segments on good timing, my fourth novel, and this is segment number three. We are still on chapter one, and let's just start it. You have come back. Yes, I wonder, you have time for one who has left earlier. Word so happened to appear before the stranger, sounding awkward even to himself. Plenty, come, accept the seat which you so earlier left. Amos shiny harmonicas dropped into his pocket from whence it came. I shall fetch us a drink, perhaps a snack. A man of six foot two inches tall, hanging around the 200 to 210 pound range, dark curly hair and a few days worth of whiskers, sits waiting. No more running. No more this town to the next. His eyes are rubbed with his hands, gently rubbed. His hands are noticed by himself, dirty. He wonders in silence as to his whereabouts. Just a speck of Mother Nature. This is where you sit. Emil exits the house onto the front porch. All places are pretty much the same. Y yeah, why here? Why not? Here, enjoy a little lemonade. Thank you. I came across this place some time ago. Seems to be a nice place, a good place. The folk around here are good. Honest crowd with smiles, laughter, music. They sort of taught me how to slow down. Mmm, good juice. I appreciate the comment. Thank you. Now, about your issue. Amos sits himself upon the rocker as if a notebook should be handy and a pen in the ready. Issue? Yes, you did come back. I am sure it was not for the liquid, but rather a message. You have quit running? Why is this? Running? You characterize me as running? <laughs> a laugh is noticed among them. Amos sits erect, a patient for the truth, ready for lies and the usual. I am not a runner. Another sip of lemonade. They sit in silence while the calm of nature changes into a gentle breeze. Leaves continue to fall, swirling, bending, and dancing as if on Broadway. Autumn is beautiful. A moment increases its stay. Even with empty glasses held in their hands, a moment increases its stay. Listen. A squirrel jettisons from one branch to another, a squirrel chasing a playful friend. Nature hands imagination over on a silver platter. Listen. Gotta like the morning doves. Abel keeps his cool, his thoughts are few. His thoughts have a place and time when all was good. Emil chooses just the other day, a moment when he strolled into the grocery store for a few items, a short chast chat session, and the unexpected. Who knows what lies ahead? Emil just opened the door and a smile greeted him. Emil now smiles as he remains in his rocker upon the porch. She sure carries a nice smile. She sure does. Excuse me. The stranger turns to Emil. Uh, I'm just looking back. Uh, did you say nice smile? Might have. I met this lady. She had a nice smile. Ah, uh, they all do. Yeah, hers was special. Calm now. All ladies give the same. No, no. This girl had something. Maybe it was you. She had. Where is this young lass now? I don't know. A heavy head bows down. Words circle round and round, but none escape through the mouth. Where am I? Probably having the same kind of talk with some little old lady as you are with me. Ever put your hands together? 
Emil lifts his hands and presses his palms together. The stranger looks up, a smirk across his face. I have prayed, yes. First lesson complete. Hand me your glass. More lemonade. Emil allows himself breathing room, departing from the porch and taking a short walk through his house into the kitchen. He allows the stranger room to breathe, time to think, and, if his wish is to do so, time to walk away. Emil shall hold no prisoners. Emil shall keep no dreams upon a shelf. Allow yourself to breathe, share and share alike. To a -lu -a -lu, I love you. To a -lu -a -lu, I love you. <laughs> Emil pours lemonade into the two glasses, singing his song. Emil is always singing. At least, he keeps trying to sing. And when... He glances out the kitchen window into the distance, upon a, mut upon a hilltop, a shade of blue off to one side, a shade of brown off to the other side, and right down the middle, time will come, soon enough. Thought you might have left. Amo hands a stranger a sparkling glass of lemonade. Thank you. Do you need me to leave? If the thought presents itself, act accordingly. The door is always open. Thanks. The stranger brings the glass down from his mouth. It's turning into quite a nice day. By the way, what is your name? How important is a name? Does it matter if I told a lie? How would you know if I give you this name or a nickname? Perhaps I use the name of a neighbor for his sake, not mine. Have you introduced yourself? The stranger straightens himself out, stands broad and stern. My name, dear sir, is Gabriel. I'd like to shake your hand in friendship and also apologize for my rude behavior. Two men shake hands as Emil too stands up from his rocking chair. My name is Emil. Emil P. Cool Train. Believe it or not, I believe, holding back laughter. C O O L T R A I N. Yep. Sometimes, well, most of the times, I capitalize the T. Amo P. Cool, capital T train. Pretty cool name, huh? Original. Again, I thank you, kind sir. The stranger bows. More lemonade. Suits me fine. I shall walk to the kitchen and retrieve some of the finest. Care to join me on a journey? And I thank you all very much. This closes segment number three of Good Timing.